See, how long have you known Mr. Seven? Years. Seven years. What kind of a man did you know him? Well, a man a nice man, just like anybody else. The only difference I'd say in the man, he seems to be a little high. Ed Gein, his older brother Henry, his father George and mother Augusta, lived together on their 160-acre farm a few miles outside of Plainfield, Wisconsin. George was an alcoholic, and Augusta was a demanding and overbearing woman who had full control over her boys. From as far back as Ed could remember, Augusta was either delegating farm work for the boys to perform, or quoting the gospel. She tried hard to teach Ed and Henry about sin, especially about the evils of sex and women. In 1940, Ed's father George died as a result of his alcoholism. Four years later, Henry died whilst fighting a fire. Ed was now fully responsible for the welfare of his domineering mother. For two years, he tended her to her demands until her death in 1945. But Ed, now alone, sealed off all but one room and the kitchen of the large farmhouse. He no longer worked the farm after the government began paying him as part of a soil conservation program. So Ed started doing local handyman jobs to subside his income. Gein stayed to himself. No one knew that he'd spent hours obsessed with sexual fantasy and reading up about female anatomy. The human experiments performed in Nazi camps also fascinated him. His mind filled with images of sex, and as the mental images merged into one, Ed would reach gratification. Gus, another loner, was a longtime friend of Gein's. Gein told Gus of experiments he wanted to perform, but needed bodies. But together, the two began robbing graves for the needed bodies. The same scenario went on for more than 10 years. This included removing Gein's mother from her grave. The experiments with the corpses became more gruesome and bizarre over time, and included necrophilia and cannibalism. Gein's obsessive fantasies centralized on his overpowering desire to turn himself into a woman. He would construct items out of the skin of the body that he could then drape on himself, such as a female mask and breasts. He even made a complete body-sized female-like jumpsuit. Gein's needs escalated into believing to perfect his desired sex change, he would need fresher bodies. So on December the 8th, 1954, Gein now aged 48, killed Mary Hogan, a owner of a local tavern. The police were unable to solve the strange disappearance of Mary Hogan, but with the blood found in the tavern, they knew she was most likely a victim of foul play. Gus was not involved in the murder. He was institutionalized before the killing began. Only Gein knew for sure how many women he killed. On November the 16th, 1957, Gein entered the hardware store owned by Bernice Warden. Gein had been to this same store hundreds of times and Bernice had no reason to fear him. She likely thought nothing when Gein removed a 22 rifle from the display rack, although her instincts probably sharpened if she saw him insert his own bullet into the rifle. Gein then shot the rifle and killed Bernice. He then placed her body into the store's van and returned to go and get the till. He then drove the store truck to his home. An investigation to the whereabouts of Bernice Warden began after her son Frank, a deputy sheriff, returned late in the afternoon from an early morning hunting trip to discover that his mother was missing and blood was on the floor of the store. A review of the store receipts included a purchase of half a gallon of antifreeze. Warden then started to think about any suspicious activity that he could recall, and one thing came to mind. He remembered that Gein had been in and out of the store the previous week, and also at closing time in the night before. He remembered Gein saying he'd be back in the morning for antifreeze, and that Gein questioned Warden about going hunting the next day. Although Gein had never been involved in any known criminal activity, the sheriff felt it was time to pay the odd loner a visit. Gein was located by the police at a store near his home. Police then went to Gein's farmhouse in hopes of finding Bernice Warden. The shed was the first area to be searched. Working in the dark of the night, Officer Schley lit a torch and slowly swung it around the shed. Inside was a woman's naked corpse hanging upside down. The body disemboweled and the throat and head missing. But it was the body of Bernice Warden. But next came the search of Gein's house. The police officers waded through the piles of rubbish with only oil lamps to guide them. As the officers' eyes adjusted, the rubbish began to take a recognizable form. 
One that was more horrific than anyone could have imagined. Everywhere they looked, they saw various body parts, some used as household items, such as skulls made into bowls, jewelry made into human skin, lips hanging, chair seats with human skin upholstery, face skin that was well preserved and resembled masks, and a box of vulvas, among which was his mother's, painted silver. It was later determined that the body parts came from 15 different women, although some parts could never be identified. One of the most shocking items found was that of the fellow officer Warden's mother's heart, found in a pan on the stove. The lives of the police officers who walked through the House of Horrors on that night changed forever. Gein was committed to the Warpen State Hospital for the duration of his life. It was revealed that his reasons for killing older women stemmed from his love-hate feelings for his mother. He never admitted to his cannibalistic or necrophilia activities. At the age of 78, Gein died of cancer and his remains were buried in his family plot in Plainfield. The property eluded evil and horrific memories for the people of Plainfield, and eventually it was set on fire by the citizens that lived there.